Well, let's get down to brass tacks. Uh, enough of the pleasantries here. Uh, yeah, we don't talk about happy things. <laughs> Today on, on the Best Damn Nerd Show, and I've been uh, sort of chomping at the bit to discuss this uh, as it is the the flames have been uh, fanned and fanned at the fans, uh, as it were. I mentioned in passing, I believe it was the last episode, the first look at the Cowboy Bebop Netflix adaptation. Talked about it multiple times now uh, on the show about my trepidation regarding this live action adaptation. Uh, what a masterpiece Cowboy Bebop is already. So why are you doing this? It seems it's it has seemed doomed to fail just from the outset. It, it's like developmentally. All these different things, and, and I mentioned last week, they finally, you know, we get to take a look at uh, the costumes and stuff. Like, before we get into that, let's, let us all remember uh, what John Cho said, you know, it, who plays Spike, the main character. It's an ensemble show, but I, if there is a main character, it's obviously Spike. Uh, the, that they had little to no contact with the creator uh, so, you know, that, in that, and where he could, he struggled to, to name, uh, his, his favorite episode, uh, and, and everything like that. And, you know, then we got, we got to keep it strange and just all of that good stuff. Uh, so that's, did, that's what we're dealing with. Did the creator it, not want to be a part of it or did so they just that, not seek him out? That this is this is where I'm going with that. So okay. uh, Shinichiro Watanabe, uh, apparently his sort of deal with it was that he uh, gave them notes uh, on on the show, and that he and he has come out and said that they that he has no sort of say in what they do with those recommendations, Davis. And he literally said in an interview, all I can do is just hope and pray that it turns out good. He is not stoked about this at all. Like he, he clearly has the same misgivings uh. as the fandom. And make no mistake, it is a passionate, loving fandom. Uh, that, that goes for most animes. But Cowboy Bebop has attained this very, I think, unique place in, in anime because of its, you know, uh, tsunami Adult Swim sort of role as well for a lot of people, and it's 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 a very strong fandom. And for the creator to say that I just have to hope and pray that it turns out good, that is, that is a a sort of startling <laughs> revelation <laughs> uh, about wh where this where this show is headed. And it just again has seemed sort of doomed from the outset. It seems like that they don't really know. Uh, what they're doing with it. And then, so we get this first look at the costumes and I very briefly mentioned that they even sort of defied my low expectations for it. <laughs> um, I had, I had misgivings about, all, you know, a lot of the, the, the sort of the casting decisions. I don't think John Cho was necessarily the right choice to play spike. Then that interview uh, only served to reinforce my feelings that he was not a great choice to play spike uh, that being said, his costume looked fine, looked, uh, uh, you know, approximated more so the, the anime than some of the others. Jet Black's costume looked honestly pretty lifted straight from the anime, which is, which is great. I think one of the things you want to look at these characters and them to be instantly, instantly identifiable like they are, uh, in the anime. And then we got to Daniela Pineda's Faye Valentine. Uh, and she was the one, she was the casting that I was most bullish on. Let, let me, let me just say that she was the one I was like, okay, I can, I can kind of see that, you know, like she's like the, just from like the look of her that, you know, if you put her in the Faye Valentine costume like that, that could be Faye Valentine. And, but it was her, it, her costume was the one that I was like, that looks nothing like Faye Valentine. <laughs> like they, they sort of tried to approximate the the yellow top and that, but beyond that, nothing. They, they didn't get the hair right. They didn't get anything else right. And uh, we're going to talk about Miss Pineda a, a lot here in, in this segment. But the like, it was like they made no effort to sort of get Faye Valentine correct. And I know that the costume is. You know, maybe you couldn't do the Faye Valentine costume exactly right uh, for this live action show. Uh, a lot of cosplayers that have done the Faye Valentine <laughs> costume 
exactly right at Comic-Con would disagree. Now, that being said, yes, doing stunts in the costume is a little bit different. But rather than completely reinventing it, I think, you know, maybe lengthen it, maybe uh, tweak, change it up. I think everybody, all the fans would have been fine with that. But again, that instantly recognizable, iconic Faye Valentine doesn't exist in this show. They fucked it up. They blew it. They they absolutely blew it. Davis, I know you're not a Cowboy Bebop watcher, uh, but I'm inter- I, I am interested to watch it, though, after all, because I, you know, as you're talking, I realized that every every anime fan that I hear speak about this show, I, I never hear bad things like there's never like somebody in the middle. It's always pretty high. So I, I am interested to actually possibly give it a shot. Yeah, I do think that it is it is one of the most highly and universally regarded animes. Like you said, that you very it's very it's very rare that you run into somebody that is that has watched the whole thing or or watched a good chunk and be like, yeah, you know, I just yeah, I hate it or I didn't they, I think there are people that it's not their obviously it's not a hundred percent, but that you know, for maybe it's not their cup of tea. They're not into film noir or jazz type stuff, but uh I think if you give it enough time, it it is it, it is truly a masterpiece. And it has been uh, one of my closest friends during the pandemic. I've re- I rewatched it many times during the past uh, year and a half or so. And it's just I've only, my appreciation for it has only grown. And now this live action adaptation is making me groan and wail uh, for why are they doing this? And the so the reveal happened. Uh, I, I don't know if you agree with me. I don't think that they nailed the Faye Valentine aesthetic. Uh, and with me saying full, with full understanding that tweaks, I expected there to be some tweaks in particular to her costume, that it couldn't be an exact replica or not that it couldn't be, that it wouldn't be, Mm -hmm. but hers is the most vastly different than any of the other characters. It's the most different, but I like, as somebody that's just looking at the pictures of the anime picture of the live action, that's all my frame of reference. I see how they got where they got to, but it's mostly from a, they're trying to non-sexualize it. That's, I was like, this is very obvious that this is what they're going for. And I, I understand why. Okay. Um, well, I, I want to come, I want to come back to that statement that you, that you just made. Cause I do think that is exactly what they're doing. Uh, yeah. But I have one question for you first, I, th- because I, I maintain that if I had showed you on Monday, a a still or a clip from Faye Valentine and Cowboy Bebop. And then the next week uh, you saw that photo uh, of just Daniela Pineda and the costume alone. I, I bet you dollars to donuts, Davis, you would not have known that was Faye Valentine. <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> no fucking chance. That's my point. I mean, they, she's got purple hair. So I might Ish. be able to. It's like so much more <laughs> it's muted. It's very than... darker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there is no chance that that anybody that, that that that's what I'm talking about. Like the iconography is not there. They missed the boat entirely on Faye Valentine. Now circling back to the desexualizing of the character, I think you're absolutely right. That that is what they're going for, and not only are they going for that, but I think that they are insinuating we will hear from Daniela Pineda in a few, few moments here that the sexualization of Faye Valentine, that they are indicting that from the series. It's almost like that they are apologizing for the fact that, uh, they, that Faye Valentine was like this in the anime. Faye Valentine's character uses her sexuality, uses her attractiveness, uh, very skillfully in cowboy bebop. She is a sexual character. She's a sexy character. She's hot as hell. She's a total smoke, but she's also a complete badass. It's part of who she is. Like, I, I, I was I was thinking about this and all the uproar and everything like that and what Netflix, uh, Kevin Smith's of the world and, and all these folks don't seem to get. Kevin Feige, throw that asshole in the mix too. Uh, what, what, people, what people don't seem to get about this is that a lot of these passionate fandoms and fans are okay with with things being changed around a little bit and tweaked and adapted and understanding that the adaption is not going to be a shot for shot lift or a page for page lift uh, from these things, but you want them to stay true to the characters. You you want them to stay true to the spirit of it all. And I, I have no confidence that when we start actually seeing this footage roll out, that they'll be doing that. And this sort of, 
this sort of uh, indictment of what Faye Valentine was before in the anime just shows that they have no appreciation for the spirit of these characters. Like I was thinking about Lord of the Rings, the, the Lord of the Rings films are beloved by Tolkien fans, absolutely beloved. And they were accepted in spite of the fact that those movies made tons of changes to the, to the books, you know? And I mean, I long for the, the days when the loudest decrier of the, the Lord of the Rings movies was, Oh, they, you know, Arwen wasn't actually the one that, you know, rode Frodo to Rivendell kind of deal, or where was Tom Bombadil? I long for those days, but, <laughs> but in spite of all of that, the, the, the fandom, uh, you know, just it, it encircled Lord of the Rings, embraced it and he understood it for what it was. And, was grateful for the fact that it respected the source material uh, and, and gave us those beautiful movies because it stayed true to the spirit of the source material. It didn't apologize for the source material. It wanted to give us a film adaptation of it. And uh, you know, pretty good for what they did. I think similarly what Davis, you and I, one of our favorite movies mutually uh, as well as Imperial Commissar Jeff Bud, Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> one, of, one of my all time favorite books and the movie is right up there too. And the movie makes some wild changes. You know, it's, it's yeah. a much more streamlined revenge story than the book because the book is so lengthy, but I think we can both agree. It stayed true to the spirit of the book. Yeah. Cause the characters, like you said, they're right on, right on track with how, who and what they should be. Yeah. And, and so that's like, that's what I think a lot of people miss with these things and when they sort of misinterpret sort of fans feelings and, and what the expectation level is, the expectation level isn't uh, shot for shot lifting. And, and it, it, to, to the point that even uh, they came out and said, yeah, this isn't going to be a shot for shot remake of cowboy bebop. N nobody's expecting that. And I don't think, I don't think anybody wants that too, especially when they don't have high confidence in the show because they, <laughs> I don't want to, you know, <laughs> when I think of Cowboy Bebop, I think what bothers me the most is I don't want anyone, when they hear the term or the, uh, the, the, the words Cowboy Bebop, I don't want them thinking of the Netflix show. I want them thinking of the masterpiece that it was. That's, that's what bothers me most about this show's existence. But, yeah, just stay true to the spirit of your characters, of the, of the stories of the show and, and, and things like that nature. And you might, you might have a hit on your hands. I don't think that's what they're going to be doing. Yeah. And to touch on the sexualization part a little bit, it's, I, what really bothers me is that they adhere to our culture instead of the culture of the story sure. and this and what that represents. And, you know, you don't have to abide by, our rules out here when it's a completely different world. It's a completely different setting. It's like you can, that's you're, you're able to do those things. You're able to tell those stories and show those characters how you want to, because it's not here. And that's what we love. It's, it's something different. And uh, when they, when they do these things because of our culture out here, it's, it's, it sucks. Well, I think the idea that, um, First of all, it it is a it is a complete misunderstanding of the Faye Valentine character. Uh, she is a sexy character. That's part of who she is. Like it is, it watch the show, and that's just just like we jokingly talked about. I believe on the Discord, bestamnerdshow.com slash Discord. Uh, honestly, if there's not a lot of smoking in the show, then they've they, then they've missed some of the <laughs> a big part of the aesthetic. That is uh, something of, I know <laughs> of, of of the show. So and you know, fuck it. Sorry, smoking's cool. Uh, <laughs> I miss Joe Camel. <laughs> I'm not saying it's good to do it. It's terrible for you, and I don't recommend you do it. But I'm just saying it does look cool. Uh, and, and maybe in their world, it doesn't get the. Yeah, cancer, who knows? You know? Yeah, and first of all, I don't need to be thinking about that. Just like I, I don't need to be thinking about what that cigarette's doing to Spike or Faye or Jet. Just like I don't need to be thinking about a bank loan for an Avenger. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> so the. The sexualization of Faye Valentine, I think that they they see that costume and they assume certain things about her. And yes, she is portrayed as a very sexy character, but again, a very badass character, a very in charge character, a character that has depth to her. Uh, her backstory is heartbreaking at times. She can be frustrating at times. She is a well-written character. 
Uh, and so for them to sort of be singling her out as, oh, well, this character clearly needs to be changed. It's just a bunch of horny little anime fans that, that want to see this Faye Valentine costume. And that's and that's where we're going now is that the reaction, uh, as predicted, was piss poor to this first sort of images from uh, Cowboy Bebop. And it's it's interesting that they sort of uh, ch- with this reveal change their own crappy narrative to an even crappier one like because i think i think if they got the costume right it would have been just more of the same of people questioning the choice of john Cho, people resurfacing that interview about him having no idea what cowboy bebop is really supposed to be about uh and things like that but because they swung and missed so poorly on this fave valentine costume uh, a lot of fans you know were voicing their displeasure like hey this doesn't look anything like fave valentine and let me be clear the vast majority of these fans, when they say it doesn't look anything like Faye Valentine, are not talking about the actual physical appearance of Daniela Pineda. Some of them are, and, and I don't agree with them. I don't agree with any fan that has personally attacked Daniela Pineda for how she looks or, or anything like that. That's you know never something that you want to do. But the actual fans that are just voicing like, hey, this costume sucks. This costume doesn't look anything like Faye Valentine. Criticisms about the costume and the overall look of how they are presenting Faye Valentine are completely valid. And it's, and and that is the main sort of conversation that's going on. But predictably, they are latching on to the sort of uh, the worst of, of the comments and that, oh, it, it's just beca- like because of her physical appearance and, and things like that. Of course, she doesn't match the cartoon. Uh, and, and everything that people are latching onto. That's not the, the complaints are coming about the costume. Costumes are important. Uh, it, they, they, they are, especially in nerdy properties. I mean, what, yeah. what we, we talk about them all the time, like especially early MCU. Oh man, how are they going to do Captain America's costume? What, what is this going to look like? All these things. Uh, you go back to Spider-Man, like the, the choices they made with Green Goblin and, and, and stuff like that. You know, it's it's always been a thing. But now they are they are turning it into this sort of narrative football that somehow it's just a bunch of scummy, horny anime fans that are they just wanted a a simplified, sexualized Faye Valentine. And if you watch Cowboy Bebop, you'd know that's not what we want. Uh, and <laughs> so anyway, let's but Daniela Pineda. Uh, in the in the midst of this uh, hurricane of criticism over the costume, decided to take to Instagram uh, and pulled the Kevin Smith. So let's hear from her. Oh, no. Hey guys! So as you know, our Cowboy Bebop first look dropped today, which was so exciting. And I just wanted to address a couple of things that sort of keep coming up in the comments amongst fans. First, I wanted to apologize to the fans that I did not anatomically match the Faye Valentine character. Um, six foot, double D size breast, two not inch Not six waist. foot, not double you know, D. They looked idiot. everywhere for that woman and they couldn't find her. It's kind of weird. So they just went with my short ass. I know. Am I right? You know, there was talk about like, can we put Daniela in a time machine and maybe give her different parents so she yeah. has different genetic information to sort of make her look better? It proved to be too complicated. And the other thing I wanted to bring up was I wanted to apologize that the outfit I'm wearing is not exactly what she wears in the anime. You know, we tried, um, but doing stunts in tissue paper, things disappear, they rip, sometimes it just got lost. Anyway, like I was saying, that original costume, uh, they made a couple of them, but like I said, they got sort of slurped up in my various crevices, never to be retrieved again. So we needed to really build something that could withstand the test of time. So. Just, you know. I'm going to run that back. Hey, guys. So, <laughs> as you know, our Cowboy Bebop first look dropped today, which was so exciting. And I just wanted to address a couple of things that sort of keep coming up in the comments amongst fans. First, I wanted to apologize to the fans that I did not anatomically match the Faye Valentine character. Um, six foot, double D size breast, two inch waist. You know. All right. <clears throat> I'll pause it right there. Uh <laughs> Completely dismissive uh, of the fan base, this sarcastic, condescending apology uh, of Daniela Pineda talking about this and the fact that she is, again, giving out as she is enhancing this false narrative that the criticisms are primarily based on the fact that she does not match Faye Valentine's physical appearance 
in terms of her genetics. That is not that is not what people uh, are mostly ups, upset about. And uh, I use upset. That's not what people are critiquing, you know, uh, and just the ultimate condescension. I want to apologize. I six foot double D two inch waist, which is not. Oh, look, we're getting into anime semantics here, but that's not what Faye Valentine is. So, um, Davis, your reaction to to uh, Miss Pineda's uh comments there she yeah no she's definitely harping on probably the worst of the internet comments i'm i'm sure that you know it's the very select few and she's just trying to draw attention to that where uh the the crux of the issue is on the actual look of the costume so it's it, it but it's it's very i don't know it it would turn me off as a fan watching this just like knowing that you know, people don't take criticism. <laughs> what? Like, we'll take criticism. I'll take. No, we don't take it well, but we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I think old, fans of Cowboy Bebop want this to be good, uh, and they they want they they want to like you, Daniela. They do. <laughs> what they don't want is you to come on here, give a fake apology. And make us try and feel bad or feel some type of way, because that's exactly what she's doing when she's pointing out those fake dimensions of Faye Valentine. That that is that is the like trying to blame anime culture right there. Like that she is trying to say that how Faye Valentine looked in the past was unrealistic, was wrong, and shame on us for wanting that. That's exactly what she's doing. And the, the fact that it's not that they couldn't duplicate the costume and how Faye Valentine look. He said they needed to, they had to. And then that to me is just completely ridiculous. Why, why respond and come at the fans this way? Let's, let's hear out again a little bit more here. They looked everywhere for that woman and they couldn't find her. It's kind of weird. So they just went with my short ass. I know. Am I right? You know, there was talk about like, can we put Danielle in a time machine and maybe give her different parents? So she has different genetic like, information to sort of not even clever or funny. It's just bad. To be too complicated. So cringy. The other thing I wanted to bring up was I want to apologize that the outfit I'm wearing is not exactly what she wears okay. in yeah, the not, anime. You not exactly what she wears. It's not anything close to what she wears in the <laughs> anime. Uh, and and speaking speaking of that, like when you're talking about like trying to find different parents and stuff, uh, you know, I know it's very much so in vogue to to swap genders and races right now and in adaptations and stuff like that. And but oftentimes when you 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 know swap characters there's a little bit of a backlash i've heard no real backlash for the fact that faye valentine is from singapore and daniela pineda is latina not a peep so yeah. you know not a peep from the fandom not a peep from uh from people out there carrying the, the flag for certain things so that was i i found that very interesting anyway i've i've had enough uh of, <laughs> <laughs> of her but, but when she, i mean when she talks about the, the costume becoming, yeah go ahead when she talked about the costume just being tissue paper, there, it's not that small. Like, there's plenty of costumes that have, I mean, it just seems like a halter top modified to kind of have a cross section. And it just seems like a half jacket to me. Yes. Like, it, it just could have been like a, uh, like she, a half yellow jacket. A, she, <laughs> that seems pretty she, easy. <laughs> she it's like if April O'Neil turned her her pants into shorts and her top into a crop top. Right. She wears a crop top and shorts, Daniela. It's not, it's not tissue it's paper. Not that hard. <laughs> you're, you're not in a bikini like you were in that show, The Detour, by the way. Little Miss High and Mighty on your high horse crawling around uh, in in a, in a in an outfit that honestly would have not been a perfect simulation of the Faye Valentine outfit, but certainly closer <laughs> than closer than what you were wearing. It's a crop top and shorts, people. Uh, if you need to to lengthen it to make it look a little bit more functional or or what have you in a live action, I think all of the fandom would have understood. But Faye Valentine, deck her out in the yellow crop top, the yellow shorts, bright yellow, bright yellow. Uh, you put the diadem in her hair. You make her hair pop like it's supposed to. Uh, and I think everyone would this this would have been a non story. Again, uh, as as a fan, she was the one that I was least worried about. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, and 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 now now she's my least favorite. Now she's because now she has declared war on the real Faye Valentine, and uh, that's, she's Faye Valentine is a tremendous character and needs no apologies and needs no tweaking from Hollywood. She is a timeless classic character. 
Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the, the Netflix model of, of fan blaming, taking uh, taking more pages out of Kevin Smith's book, maybe uh, reinforcing what Kevin Smith said is that, you know, Netflix, as as Kevin Smith said, they don't care about you. And this is the one thing that I, I may uh, hate watch an episode or two of this Cowboy Bebop. Uh, and is, I'll have to find a way to download uh, and save for all time Haunting of Hill House. But this continued sort of thumb in the eye and just everything that Netflix is doing, how they are treating the fan bases uh, of these properties that they expect us to cheerlead for and watch uh, you know, th- them on the one hand wanting to take things that we love and then completely you know, changing them around and then giving us the finger when parts of the fan base don't like it. No, nah, I, 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 cannot, I cannot continue on this carousel anymore. This, <laughs> this is the first time I've seriously, well, after Masters <laughs> of the Universe Revelation and Kevin Smith stuff, but now combined with uh, Little Miss Pineda's video, which she then deleted, by the way. Uh, yes, so what a, you know, true bravery it's uh it's just getting very predictable now like if if they have a property that comes out and people don't like it then it's a fan blame and they try to turn the table that way and it's 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 already old and they (laughs) haven't even had that much time to use it and they keep reverting back to it and it's i don't think it's working yeah agreed it's not working uh we're gonna (laughs) Anyway, we're going to we're going to leave Cowboy Bebop's <laughs> Netflix adaptation right there. And again, the creator of the show said hope and pray it turns out good. <laughs> That's what he said. So, yeah, th- this this show has his thoughts, thoughts and prayers. <laughs> that is good. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. This is going to be a hell of a hail Mary for Cowboy Bebop. All right. We're going to take a break on the other side. We're going to switch gears. Let's talk about something, uh, you know, that maybe had a little bit of an uptick. Fun? Perhaps. What Fun if oh. I liked this week's episode of what if on the other side of the best day of nerd show. 